Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 304 at scavengerlife.com. We had another good week Yes. on eBay. Yes. Another good week in general. If it's a good week on eBay, it's a good week. In Maybe. general, in life. But, you know, one of our, our main goal in the month of March was to pay off our taxes because we got a uh, pretty big tax bill that we yeah. kind of weren't expecting, but, you know, we got it. And uh, so we paid off your federal taxes yep. a couple weeks ago, and we just paid off my federal taxes even before the deadline. It's very good. We have to pay off some state taxes, yes. which we have the uh, money for. We just need to write that check. Yep. And then I just realized that, uh, you know, the first 2017 quarterly taxes are actually oh due. Oh, my God. That's at, right. And in, in the middle of uh, this month. So it's just like a lot of taxes. It's just like, um, yeah. Now, it's no more taxes than anyone else pays just as, uh, you know, an independent a worker. As someone you that see runs a business, of it. And you just see it all. You know, if you're, uh, you know, all of this stuff is normally hidden to a W two person. Yeah. You, you know? just, it's never taken out right. of your. And 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 people were talking on the a forum about it about you know how they'll be at work. You know, they have jobs, W two jobs, and you know people will be all thrilled and kind of brag about how they have a big uh, a refund coming back to them. And uh, you know, people that own businesses are good to point out. It's just like. That's not money the government's like giving, giving you. To, that's your money. You basically gave the government a loan for right. a period of time. Yeah. So, whereas, you know, obviously it's not great that we owe all these taxes kind of all at one time because it kind of takes up all of our uh, income. But the good thing is we can kind of, uh, we have the money in our hands and can do with it what we want as long as we're doing it appropriately and we can uh, use money to invest to build business you know right um i like that part of it yeah and then but you really gotta hold on to some money to pay <laughs> no yeah stuff. i mean absolutely like, yeah it's like you said we we were like wow uh we owe well the the part of us owing the taxes too is we didn't pay our last quarter right so that is part of it you right. know, it wasn't like if we had paid our last quarter, it would have been cheaper, but right. we just didn't do that. But that's that. because we chose to use money to we were time, a renovating yeah. a house and we just kind of yeah. were giving ourselves a loan because, Basically. you know, if you don't pay all your quarterly taxes on time, then you have to pay. Uh, it's a small fee. Yeah, but small yeah, you fee, pay like a little bit of a fee. It was a worth it for us to do that. Yeah. But, yeah. So that's, that's just the way of the world. I don't know. I, there, there isn't a whole lot of talk about taxes on the uh, forum right now. So I'm assuming everyone's doing okay with it. But, yeah. Uh, you know, I think that's the, always the biggest thing for people who are just starting out and they hit that $20,000 mark when PayPal absolutely tells the IRS that yeah. you've been making that kind of it's money and then uh, they're like oh you have to start this is a business taxes you know on that, that's right? when people realize oh this is this is a right it's not business. just like you're running a yard sale that right. you can kind of just write off or, or not tell anyone about um, okay you know last week we were talking about um, uh, having imagination <laughs> Yeah, imagination. Imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other thing that keeps us successful is consistency. Mm. And I really think that's the big one. And, you know, we have people every so often, you know, people who sell on eBay who will email us. They'll even put it on the uh, form. Like, why are you telling people about all this stuff? You know, like, we're making yep. competition right but the thing is and this is it is about consistency i mean 95 percent of people in listening to us you know are interested they might sell some stuff on ebay but they're not going to be consistent about it right. you know enough to make a business right right well that's what we always say when we're like talking to anyone online or in person and you know, people are like, don't, don't tell them your secrets. And sometimes I feel like that too, where I'm like, um, oh, you know, uh -huh. but especially on slow days, I'm like, oh no. Well, I it's guess. right. Exactly. <laughs> well, when I ran into my friend at the thrift store the other day, which is funny cause she's, she's usually working during the day. So I, she had like time off during the morning. So it was funny that I saw her there, but it was weird. Cause she's asking me all these questions and she has a bunch of stuff like she just moved so she's like I need to like clean out my house and sell stuff on eBay 
And I'm like, I didn't oh. know that. Oh. Well, she she's yeah. like, I have a pile. Like, Sell stuff on eBay. Us. Give it to give it to you know charity, whatever, whatever. Uh, you know, it's hard because I'm like, oh, I don't want to like tell her all my secrets of how I run my business because right. maybe she's gonna do it too. And I'm like, she's not. Yep. She's she's got like all these other things going on. So it's like, yep. it doesn't hurt to just be like, yeah, this is how I do it. This is how I price things. This is how I figure things out. Like. Yeah, I mean, right, and yeah. you know, and, and really, you know, we always tell people that the only secret to this whole thing about having an eBay business is a listing consistent. Yeah, you, you just know? have to list, all and the that's time. why we say we always tell a new people list twenty items a day. You know, right, like right. It, like if this is a full time job, yeah, it's for you. You know, so give it yourself eight hours. Just like as you would give eight hours to an, a boss, yeah. Give it yourself eight hours, or a aim, little less. Yeah. Aim to do you know twenty items, <laughs> yeah, a day. Especially if you're just starting out. And then I always, you know, it's it's stacking power. You know, it's stacking like, power. It's like, that sounds like a video game. Though. It is. <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> yeah. you're stacking, stacking resources power. on top of resources yeah. on top of uh, 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 its resources, and like at first it doesn't seem like a big deal. But day after day after day, yeah, those twenty items plus twenty plus twenty plus twenty, it just adds up. yeah, like, uh, and we'll see that on the uh, forum every so often. Someone comes in and says, you know, I've really been at this for a while, and I'm now up to you know two hundred items, right, or, or five hundred items, items, or a thousand you know, items, and they're like, I'm now making, you know. Mm-hmm. Four thousand dollars a month, where I can actually it's replace my income from it's my job. I mean, right. that's what it's all about. Right now, it was interesting. There was one guy who came on who then was extrapolating. Well, if I'm making, I forgot what the numbers were, but like four thousand dollars a month with only five hundred items. If I have, you know, five thousand items, I'll I'm make, make so you know, much more. Twenty thousand, which I wish was a true, month, and it's just not doesn't work. Like yeah, that. we talked about this before, and that money. We have not seen our profit exponentially grow as our as our inventory grows. Right, exactly. Like, we're not making ten times as much with five thousand items as we were with five hundred items. Right. I, I mean, wish that were true, but it's not. As I've said, I think what happens with having that big inventory is that then it just gives us breathing room. So like we're yeah. about to leave at the end of April for a couple of weeks to do a job. Yeah. We're not gonna list it all. The stuff uh, will still sell. We probably won't list a little bit before and a, little, a bit afterwards. So, you know, it might be a month, but things will sell because of that large inventory. Right. You know. Right. So, you know, and, and we and we have that too where people will, you know, come on our forum and they're like, you know what? I've been selling since, you know, 1999. I'm right. a long time Me too. seller. <laughs> but then when you kind of start parsing it out, what they really mean is mm-hmm. in the early days I sold for a little while, maybe a year or two. Yeah. And then something happened. And then I have not sold for 15 yeah, a year. Yeah, 10 years. And now I'm starting over again, you know. And, yeah. And it's a much different world, obviously, on eBay. Right. And and as we've heard. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, um, I think... I think what stops people from being consistent is things we always talk yes. about, burnout, you know? Yep, burnout is uh, part of it because it can really feel like a grind sometimes, especially if you're doing it by yourself, which right. I have not experienced, but right. that can really, right. you're just like, oh. Or, you know. or I mean, that's where the imagination comes in. Like, yeah. it, like if you're not being, trying to have fun out there, right. finding different kinds of things or making it a fun kind of scavenger hunt. Yeah. If you're just kind of like, this thing sells, that's the only thing I'm ever going to buy. Commodity and, yeah. thinking, yeah. Um, so I think that that burns people out. I think also sometimes it's a self-defeating loop where they start slacking off on uh, listing items. So they have a smaller store. They, so they start making it less its money, and as they make less of money, they need to then get a job. Right. And then as they get a job, they have even less time to list, and then they're making it's less of money, and then it all kind of whittles down to, right. I no longer really have an eBay business. You right. Know? That's the big secret for us. Is well, just, that's that's you know, exactly like what, what we started with our manifesto. I mean, you know, when we were seeing people online be like, Here's the secrets to selling online and blah blah blah. And we and I remember us saying amongst ourselves with like Mikey and Wendy, like, no, there actually is no secret. It literally is about listing. Right. That's it. Yep. Buying stuff, listing it, shipping it out consistently, good yep. customer service. Yep. 
no secrets. Yep. You know, <laughs> that's it. You yep. got to just do it. You got to take action. Yeah. And I think, I mean, you know, and I don't know what makes a person good at being consistent, but I think you mm. are really, really good at being consistent. Oh, thank like, you. Like, I, you I, like, wake, like waking up every day and you don't mind like packing everything every day or, you know, if you have a folder of stuff to list, you know, that kind of thing. I think the thing that, that is the most boring, honestly, is listing. I mean, right. it really, I, and it's so funny because we're like, listing is the most important thing right. in general because that's the action item, the ultimate like top of the pyramid, honestly. Actually, it's funny. It's funny now that I'm thinking about it. Listing is at the top of the pyramid. You have to get up to that point. You have to buy stuff. You have to photograph it. You know, there's all that. And then you have to list it. And then everything else is downhill. Okay, you sell it, you ship it, blah, blah, blah. Right. So it's that. <laughs> it's the pinnacle. It's the top. Right. It's the most difficult part. And it sucks. Right. Obviously, I have a person helping me. But d we said the other day, we were like, without her, I wouldn't want to do like any of this anymore. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> like, it's and we haven't talked about that much. You know, so we started 2008. Up until 2000, end of 2016, we were just doing it on our own. And then we found someone to help us. And she works, what, 16 hours? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, four days for uh, four hours each day. It's like the perfect amount of it's time. It's the perfect amount. And really, it's kind of been a game changer. Oh, man. Like, like, it's so helpful. It's just incredible. Like, we kind of feed her all this stuff that was no fun for us. And it's kind of great. It's know? great. I mean... I do have to keep up and list, you know, like she makes drafts essentially. Uh, but we are, we, we kind of, <laughs> we kind of like do little stepping stones for her. Like we were like, okay, when we're away, we still want you to be listing stuff, but we actually want you to start pricing stuff. Like we want you to start researching and pricing. Yeah, on, stuff. And she kind of was like on books. So on we, books. Yeah. We have all, we, these we have all these boxes of books. And so, so like, whatever. she can't make an error. So yeah. if she, re so if she prices something wrong, it doesn't matter. It's really not a big deal. And we'll deal. go through and look at it. So it's, it's funny because, because like more and more, cause at first she wasn't doing titles. She was just like generic title. So I knew like what it was. So we're slowly like, you're going to do this for us. <laughs> like, everything that we know how to do, you're going to do. But even before we got her to help us, and it doesn't mean that we still don't do anything. Mm -mm. I mean, we still, she's just kind of like picking up a lot of the yeah. kind of grunt work. Yeah. But, I mean, what was your motivation or what has been your motivation just to do it day in and day out? Like, what keeps you from burning out? Is it just like... Mm -hmm. Imagining working for someone else. There's that. Um, there's the ability for me to do it at my own pace and when I want to. Um, you know, you you get motivated. You get motivated by sales, frankly. Like yeah. when stuff's selling, and you're like, "Oh, I just listed that last week. Okay, great. Like yeah. this is this is real." Even after like almost ten years, I still have to tell myself right. that. You know. Yeah, it's just really, it's the sales. And, and what that money allows us to do is what motivates me, really. Yeah. I mean, well, what motivates you? You take photos of, like, stacks of shoes all, yeah. all day. Well, it's, so. I mean, I mean, the biggest one for me is, you know, I have had jobs yes. where I've been very, you know, I, I don't know about other people, but, you know, every job I've had, there have been those moments where I've just been so aware that my time is being wasted, you know? Yep. Like, People might be friendly. Maybe the omission of the work I'm doing it's, yeah. isn't bad. You know, right. like it's a good thing. But it just feels like my life is being wasted. Yeah. Like it's to the core of my yeah. soul. Absolutely. And I just remember that feeling so well. Yep. So I'm like, I will do anything. anything. I will take pictures. Yeah. So, so part of it too is like that motivation. Like so when I'm working with our worker – help her um you know she's doing stuff over here i mean there are times where we i mean we'll talk and we'll be like hey what's going on you know how's your weekend whatever we will just sit there for four hours and she's just and she'll ask me questions about right. stuff oh what do you think about this thing and there's a music playing and there's so music so we, like we listen weird, to the radio and stuff silence. it's not awkward yeah. yeah um you know if she has a question about an item she'll come over and my everyone's ask. just in a flow like we are just yeah. like head down right. like i'm just you know head down and and I think the part that helps keep me going, too, is just like what you said, where I'm like, this is on my time. So if if she gets ahead of me on the scheduled listings, it's fine. 
I will do it at my pace. I will do it tonight. You know, when she's left, I will do it tomorrow morning. The other night, it was Friday night. Friday night. Fun Friday night. So she had gotten way ahead of me because I was like doing laundry. I was like cooking some stuff for the weekend, blah, blah, blah. And that was what I felt like doing. I was like, I feel like doing this right now. Uh, It's a rainy Friday afternoon. I don't want to sit at my computer. Yeah. Whatever. So I just like kind of took an hour off to like do some stuff. She was like, okay, bye, you know, see you later. And she left and there was like 35 listings for me to do, which is kind of a lot. You're like, this is quite a pile. But it was Friday night and I was like, whatever. I'm just going to put the radio on. I'm going to like, you know, pour myself a glass of wine and just list all this stuff. And that's what I did on Friday night. And it was no big deal. And it was fine. And it was relaxing. And it was kind of like. That motivates me where I'm like, if I, if I, for some reason, do not feel like doing this at this very moment and she doesn't need me there, I have the freedom to like, I'm going to go do this thing. I'm going to do And then I will focus. And that for me is helpful to be able to be like, not feel like it's a grind and yep. that I'm like, you are chained to your desk for four hours, you know? Yep. No, I can kind of mix it up. I think that the know? time uh, shifting is the biggest thing. Yeah, where that's a good way of putting it. I can it. choose. And, yeah. you know, if you listen or read any of those people, they're kind of like, I don't want to say they're like gurus, but, you know, people who are like motivational people or they're about like efficiency or whatever, they talk about that, about yeah, getting in, in the flow. Yeah, know? exactly. Uh, and, you know, and, and there's a lot of a logic to it, but, you know, that's. That's the nice thing about running our own business is that we can take the time to find that flow where, yeah. you know, you get a little motivated, you kind of get started, and then I just kind of forget about time, and it's more about I'm focusing on tasks. Right. And I'm into it, and I'm solving problems, and then I look up, and, you know, four hours have exactly. gone by, and I've got a, little, a, a, a lot, lot done. done. yeah. And, and because we're, you know, trying to work on things that are interesting to us, right. you know. And so that's why, like, if we're buying certain items, and I can't get into that flow where I'm like... That's a problem. You know, I got all these ties, and I'm just like, I cannot get into this. I cannot, this. yeah. This is not, you know, we are never going to do this right, right. again. Good thing know? she did all the time. Right, right, you know, it's like... Uh, well, we also ask her, too. I mean, we're not like, like, there are times where she has like a stack of certain things. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, let's take a break on this thing. Let's go do some clothes, because right. we're both getting well, a little bit I mean, like, I think that's why, eyed. you know... When we hear of new people and they're like, you know, I want to hire someone just to to do this for me, I kind of like, huh, I don't know if that's really going to work. I think it works with our helper because we're asking her to do things that we've done. We've done for years. We've done it. We kind of know is what it's like. We know how to, you know, teach her to, yeah, switch things out, do different things. I think if, if... we didn't, you know. It's kind of like they say we're eating our own dog food, right? You know? Like uh, uh, you have the you have the the empathy of that worker. I right. think it reminds me of cleaning cleaning our rental. We cleaned our rental for almost two years straight, every single turnover. So we know how we want it. We right. know what it's like. Right. So so you have that sympathy of your worker of your like. Right. I know. Like, I know what it's like. I know what you went through today. I totally appreciate it. So, you know, that's, I think that's important uh, for us anyway. It's been important for me. Yesterday, you sit, because I was texting with our our cleaner who helps us clean. And you were like, you're such a good boss. And it's so funny because I don't think of myself like that at all. Uh But I'm like. I've done their job, and the other thing is, at any point, if I need to do their job again, I will. Right. That's what you have to do when you own a business. Yep. You have to be willing to be like, oh, they can't do it? Well, I have to do it. Like, yep. there's no one else. So, I think that's an interesting aspect of it. And then the uh, last thing I think that keeps us consistent is kind of what you were talking about earlier about, you know, this isn't just a sweatshop that we've made for ourselves where we're just making enough of money just to pay the monthly bills and then it kind of zeroes out and we start all over again. Right. Which is what it felt like when I worked for someplace else. Yeah. It seems like, it seems like it was an, it's never really able to save enough its money. I mean, we're really good about, you know, we're making enough money where at the end of every month we have extra money 
And sometimes, you know, large amounts where we are slowly investing it in, like, these rental properties. Right. You know, we have goals, uh, you know, uh, secret projects we're thinking <laughs> of and working on that might take a year. Secret. For, for, for them to happen. But, yeah. you know, it, it, so it's really motivating. Yes. Uh, you know, so a money is more than just a number. It's about, like, what we can get with that. Well, I think that... And then what kind of life that will provide us. Yeah, I think that that... I'm reading this book. It's having those goals. It's yeah. so cheesy, the four-hour work week. You just... <laughs> it, that's what it's called, right? Yeah. Tim Ferriss. You just read it. Yeah. And we found it at a thrift store. And I was like, I'll just read this, because everybody I know has, like, read this book. Yep. And I, I think it's really cheesy. Um, but his ideas are really in line with our ideas in a way where in he, a bunch of like gurus, like you said, say stuff like this, where it's like, if you have this other goal that's like kind of exciting and like a little bit far off, not too far off, not like when I retire in 30 years, it's like, it's pretty close. That helps to motivate you like, I'm saving this money to do this thing so that this other thing can happen that's exciting and fun and, like, right. a goal. And I, I've always tried to have goals like that because if you don't, life is super boring Yep. and mundane. <laughs> that's what I've found. So. It's true. I mean, really, you're just like, what am I looking forward to here? Yeah. Death. You know, and, and, and that's one thing I wish we would talk about on the forum more. I try and ask people about it. But people, yeah. I mean, is I mean, is maybe because people are just like, I just got to, like, pay my bills. Of like, course. And, and that's totally cool. But I'm always interested to hear of, like, people's higher purpose, you know? Like, is, right, it, sure. is it traveling? Is it, is like, it, yeah. you know, maybe it's sending their kid to a good college or something. I don't know. Yeah, but, you know, right. it's always good to hear. Right. The the. If people have the ability to be making more and then putting that money towards something they really want to do. Right. What know? is that thing? Yeah. Exactly. I, I love hearing that from other people. I love it. And, you know, I, I do wonder, there's, you know, there's like a, a good core of people that are on the uh, forum who have, and some have been there for a long time now. You know, they've been yes. in the community for a long time. So I know that they're, they've been uh, selling for a long time. But, you know, I do wonder how many people... Like, if there's kind of a common point where people kind of decide, like, this is it for me, you know? Uh, because that, that, because we've kind of seen people flow in and out. You know, yeah. they come on, they're excited, then we don't hear from them again. Yeah. And I don't know if they just have more to do than to hang out on the Internet is with us or if they've, <laughs> you know, or or if they've just, you know, things come up. Well, uh, also, like, I've heard from some people, too, who they're like, oh, I got I actually got promoted at my job and yeah. I actually love it. There you and, go. And you're like, that's incredible. Like right. that that people can love their jobs is like something right. that's rare, I think, honestly. But then there's someone like it's your mom who, you know, uh, you know, she had, like, family issues where, like, right. she had, like, her mom got sick and she had to go down right. and, like, take her So mom that takes and, up, right. like, you have to put everything on pause. And right. we've heard that from several people right. who take care of family members. Yeah. And that really, like, puts a damper on your yeah. your continuity. Yeah. So that's definitely a factor. Okay, let's talk about our week on eBay. Like I said, it was a really good week. Good. But um, a couple things before we get into our numbers. Um so we had mentioned last week about eBay's big announcement of their guaranteed uh, shipping program. The three-day guarantee, right? And, you know, we were kind of complaining where there there seemed to be more information in the wider uh, its media than there was on eBay itself. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot, you know, eBay still has not announced, like, exact details of how this program is going to work. Although some people said if you go to eBay Radio... They've been talking about it on eBay uh, radio, but like I always say, I mean, eBay radio is great, but until I see it like on an eBay.com page where they're like, this, this, this. Wasn't there a page? Didn't someone send there's, a link to it? There's a, there's not a page, details. and I will a link to it, okay. but again, it's a very, you know, they, they, they don't have actually like who pays if it doesn't get oh, shipped on time. Stuff like that. Anyway, so, um, you know, we're kind of waiting for that information, but what people are saying is, you know, uh, you know, if you guarantee it gets shipped in three days, yeah. then people, a, a buyer can filter, I guess, mm -hmm. items based on, based on that. that. And then, yeah. I mean, 
some people have said is that if you ship it the way eBay wants you to, if it doesn't make it to them on time, eBay will pay the uh, shipping charge because that's that's it's what the guarantee is. The buyer then gets their right. Own, uh, that's uh, crazy. Money back. I mean, that's again, insane. I have not seen that in writing, so <laughs> I I just do that's not believe like, that. But yeah, but it will be interesting if eBay does, uh, you know, guarantee it like that. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. There was a lot of talk on the forum about this, like you said. And um, I honestly just like glazed over because there's so much speculation that I'm just like, I'm just going to wait until it's like a thing that we can do. And right, because just... I'm not even sure. I think on that page, it didn't have, have it's like a date. So I'm, I'm, not I'm just exactly like, sure. it's interesting. And I'll just like see the details later. Yeah, like, that's I mean, just like my basically, if we just keep, you know, if we can keep it shipping like we do right. now. We always ship. I a, ship as a, a fast as day. possible. You know, as long as we can just, you know, it doesn't, you know, slow us down or, you right. know, if if it's any more complicated, then we'll just do I'll it. Just and do then it. If we get a bonus from that, great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll I'll try anything. Yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> um, except for free. Except shipping. That's hey, one we, thing. No, we did do. try it though. No, we did right. try we it. We did try the it. The key word here is try. Right, we tried. Whether it. I keep it as an right. option is, you right. know, we saw up no debate. extra boost Ugh. in sales. Yeah. But uh, so that that was interesting. Uh, the other thing is, uh, if people don't know, so this is the beginning of a new quarter on eBay. Quarter two. Which means if you have a store subscription, you can it redeem those eBay shipping coupons. Look. We have an anchor store and we have a premium store. We have two stores. The anchor store gets a hundred and fifty dollars. I was like, I, I filled up my cart. I'm like, I still have like fifty bucks left. Like, so I just like, it's great. It's great. Like, I use shipping supplies like crazy. Obviously, yeah. every single day. So, so two things. Number one, I mean, I think it's cool they give us a free uh, it's shipping, but I feel like it's kind of like with the credit card. It rewards, you know, we end up paying a lot more of money to like for, get this. Yeah, so for the it's like, out. it's great. It's like a little bonus, but you know. But why don't you just give me $150 <laughs> off my bill every month? <laughs> yeah. You know so, what I mean? Yeah. So it is what it is. But, yeah. but that, but that's, it's what the rules is. So I'm not going like, to complain about it. it. So what kind of stuff did, did you buy? So uh, I haven't bought stuff for the second store but i did do a big order last night for the main store so 150 dollars worth of stuff i bought they have some new stuff they have ebay branded tissue paper which is whatever i barely ever use tissue paper but i do use it sometimes to wrap up ties and like little so, delicate things so if you don't take like a shirt and you fold it and you take the <laughs> tissue paper <laughs> and put like a little piece of tape and a little what do you note. think <laughs> No. Although on some delicate, more higher price items, I will do things like that. Yeah. Um. So the tissue paper, I'll use it. They also like have an eBay sticker, which is so ridiculous in a way because you're like, so that would brand like a generic box if you had it, but the eBay tape already brands it like crazy. It looks like a circus tent. Um. <laughs> I don't care. It's free. Whatever. Yeah. But I did buy the stickers because I was like, there are times where I have to honestly cover up other shipping labels. Yeah, you know if you're using yeah. a recycled box, so I'm like eBay sticker. I mean, you know, like I I'll go over to each office you and and I take the boxes and yeah. put them on our porch, and sometimes it just it looks like a clown threw it up does, on it because it does. there's all this like weird chaotic colorful tape. Like, <laughs> I mean, you can't blame eBay because those are the colors of their logo. Yeah. you know, it's the same colors as Google, so you're right. like, you know, these are tech yeah. companies. Yeah, they're bright. Fine. They're colorful. The the one complaint I do have about eBay tape, eBay, are you listening? It's really not sticky. It's yeah. so crazy. Huh. It's sticky on poly mailers and like, um, you know, bubble mailers or whatever. But sometimes like if there's a shift in temperature, everybody's going to agree with me on this. I know it. Like, okay, say it's warm in my office and I like tape up a box and then the heat's not on in my office overnight. I'll go back and like the tape is like coming off the box. What? I'm like, really, eBay? Wow. That is like some cheap shite. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Like, yeah. if my boxes are falling apart by the time they get there with the eBay tape, yeah. 
it's got i feel like they've got to fix that because that's right. a major yeah flaw. like we would rather pay a little more f- to buy uh, for tape. the tape if it was like right exactly good tape yeah. so i think that's got to get addressed so what stuff did did you buy so did you buy about poly mailers uh-huh. i use the not it's like eight and a half by 11 poly mailer i use that one like insane so i ordered like 200 of those um I ordered some like eight by eight by eight boxes, which I hadn't seen before. I don't think they had the eight by eight by eight. So is that a good for? Is like a, a hat, like a, a mug, mug or a? Right. It's a great size. Yep. It's a good size. I really needed it. I had never had that one before. Um, I ordered some smaller bubble mailers. They they have these like bigger ones that are like nine by twelve, and I have a crap load of those still. Um, so I ordered like the smaller size. It's like half that size, which is also a great size for like little. Now there's things. still one size that we have to still buy from. Uh, yeah. A U line. So and what size is that? It's 19 by 24. These poly mailers. So it's like for like a jacket. It's or? big. Yeah, I use them all the time. Like, mm. if I have like a, I also use them um, to wrap other things like. Mm. If I'm doing, like, a small rug, I'll wrap the rug up in, like, a thick trash bag and tape it. And then I'll tape a poly mailer around it. So I kind of – I honestly, like, I use the 19 by 24 poly mailers as, like, wrap. Right. um, In a way because they're, like, thicker than just, like, a trash bag. So if you hear this – 19 by 24 is a great poly mailer size that a lot of people use, like you said, for a jacket or a blanket. Like, a bulky thing. I use them all the time. Are are the the eBay – Poly mailers as thick. They're like, thick. They? Okay, so I better. would say they they are they are a good quality. They're they're better quality than the ones I buy from like really? some seller on eBay. Yeah, they wow. are. They're good. Okay, so those are those yep. are great. I use them like crazy. I use poly mailers because we sell a lot of clothes and hats and ties, and yep. I put shoes in poly mailers. People yep. ask me, how do I ship shoes? Look, shoes are like right. generally indestructible because they're used on your feet. So. I mean. There are caveats if they're really expensive shoes or if they have like a, like a high heel, like a high heel that might poke through. But right. if it's just like a pair of tennis shoes, yeah, just like, throw them in a poly. Yeah. Put them in. I put them. And we've in never a, had a complaint. I've so, shipped yeah. thousands, literally thousands of pairs right. of shoes. So and a poly Miller's fine. So if people choose to put them in boxes, that's cool. It's just a choice. It just saves yeah. on weight. Right. Um, but what I do is I wrap them in like a clean shopping bag right. or wrap them in like butcher paper and then put them in a shopping bag. It's fine. Yep. It's totally great. So that's the stuff I bought. I'm going to buy some more um, poly mailers, I think, um, on the second store. But that's the exciting world of shipping. Yeah. And I don't find eBay does a good job telling us when the new quarter is. Like, I don't think we... We didn't even get an email I don't think we've it. gotten a message yet. It's so crazy. There's a good site that we always mention because it's just like, I wish eBay would have just... They should do this. Yeah. It's by a guy named... Uh, it's David, and the site's yes. called... Where's the coupon? Dot com. Right. And as some people say, coupon. Coupon. And it's it's just a donation based site, so it's free, but you know, it's always good to th- uh, throw him some cash. So basically, what it is is you sign up for it and he sends you an email the day before. Right. And is like, tonight at 1201 right. PST. And gives you a link that you click yes. and it opens up the eBay page and then you It's order. very yeah. helpful because <laughs> the other thing is they don't send you an email at eBay. <laughs> And they also don't make it super easy to find where the coupon is. Right. So that's why where's the coupon is awesome because you click through and it's like, here's your coupon code. Right. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm going to do a bit of a like, deep dive here too. Um, people complain about they uh, use the coupon. It looks like it's a zeroed out. But then if they go on their PayPal, it looks like they got charged. Do, I've you never had that, that issue. I've never had that issue. And it's it, so I double checked. I like looked... So I I got my shopping cart all awesome, had everything in there. I put the coupon in. I press apply. It zeroed it out. Zero. I was like, pay. And it's like, great. You owe zero dollars. And then I got the PayPal email, and it's like zero dollars. Okay. Like, it was completely got it. Yeah. fine. Cool. So I don't know if it's like a bug with something. I don't know. Yeah. So- Someone one time was just explaining it was just some weird way eBay and PayPal were doing, I guess for their own tax purposes, like how they would uh, write off the right, coupon. But right. anyway, it's always worked. It works for, for us, us and yeah. it's always said zero for me. So yeah. I don't know. 
yeah. what that issue would be. Okay, the other thing we talked about is last week was the active content. You know, eBay yeah. is ramping up. They're going to start stripping out any active content on your uh, <laughs> on your it listings and this, which includes YouTube embeds. and this would be like a, a video embeds flash it would be galleries flash <laughs> galleries it would be anything that it's were old it's stuff. like yeah okay so but okay great so here's the issue people a few people actually had shared HTML5 embedding code that it was like okay, use this code instead to embed your videos. It's still getting flagged by eBay as active content. So that embed code, according to eBay's page, that's like more information. Like if you click the more information page, they want you to host the video file yourself, which is mm. the most ridiculous thing. Obviously, everyone's going to host it on YouTube. Right. So my solution right now is... I need to go back and change this on my listings is literally just do a plain HTML link to the YouTube video. Right. What else can you do? But then, but then the problem with that is that, so if someone's on your eBay page right. on, on the item page, they click the uh, YouTube link. It then takes them to YouTube, a uh, YouTube. And then they have to actually, you know, go back. Right. Or, it's just uh, stupid. Yeah. So. so I don't know. It's obviously a ridiculous problem for the year 2017. And I'm sure there's going to be some company that comes up with some third-party thing where they solve the problem, but you have to pay them. <laughs> and just like, Maybe. I, this is just where I just wish eBay would just solve their just own problem. Fix it, because you it's, know? Uh, I mean, I, I understand getting rid of active content. I understand getting rid of, like, flash galleries. and Like, right. it's, it's, it's junky and it's not mobile-friendly. Right. But YouTube... You should be able to watch a YouTube video on your phone. Right. Or just eBay host a video. Yeah, you know, let me like host a video. Upload a video let to Let it be 30 thing. seconds long, whatever, yeah. you know. Right. Like, make it work. Uh, so a couple random things. So on the a forum, we're now, if you sign up for the it's forum, we now approve people. Yeah. We're just, that's just a little housekeeping note because we're having a, some issues with just spam. Spammers spammers coming on and we do not want anyone including ourselves to be bothered by spam posts so mm. we just approve everyone so if you ever have a problem it just email us but you know it takes us no more than not very long half a day to but find look it and if it. i if I accidentally deny your user because your username looks spammy, meaning you have like <laughs> seven numbers in your username, to me that's spam. Um, just please email us because I will approve you <laughs> if you're not a spam bot. So yeah. just help me out if, if I've denied you by accident. If you are a USPS nerd, uh, you might have seen news this week or links on the internet about how USPS now, if you sign up for it, will give you a preview of the mail coming to your house. It, it shows you a scan of your mail. It doesn't show you packages, which is kind of a bummer. It just shows you flat envelope Wait, mail. It shows you photos of Yeah, it's a scan. What? Because, okay, so USPS already takes digital scans of like all flat mail apparently wow. um because it it digitizes it to sort it right so they're allowing that information to be public to you right um and why is, do you want to see that because then i guess you're like am i getting that bill in the mail today oh yes right. i am but so here's the thing it's it's it was implemented in our area first there's huge swaths of the country where it's not implemented yet uh -huh. so i signed up for it and um, our mail comes at like noon or one, and I wasn't getting the scan email till like five. I'm like, yeah, I know, I already know I got this mail, so it didn't really help yeah. very much. It's not coming at like nine a.m., yeah. um, so it kind of defeats the purpose. And they're not showing packages, and for me, packages are the most right. Important I mean, I thing. think for you know, if you're under a certain age, I mean, we pay all of our bills online. Right. Everything's done online, so the mail for us is either just. Like spam, it's mostly mails that we can't like, stop, yeah, and then out. packages. And really, I think that's what a USPS is becoming. And it's I think they, I know that is that yeah. they're a package company, right? You know? Right. Uh, so yeah, I I would love to see my packages scanned. Uh, also, maybe that's ha gonna come soon. Well, I I'm guess, sure. but but that's just you just check out the. Uh, 
it's number that's being tracked. I mean, that's which all I that do is. anyway yeah. when so, I'm expecting us. So, but I don't know. It's kind yeah. of interesting. I don't. It, it's one of those things where you're like, does this really matter? Yeah, it's, I don't it's know. kind of like it's cool, but yeah, it's yeah. a big deal. Uh, another thing that I saw and I will put a link to is some guy sold a pair of old uh, Levi's from the late 1800s. He had found them in a trunk, and they and they looked and there's a photo of them and they looked brand new. Uh, I gotta look at this. Yeah, it's uh, and what's interesting is that a pair of Levi's from the late 1800s don't look that much different from the ones today. There's a little bit of its difference, like wow. they didn't have the same kind of pockets. Yeah, but the tag uh, looks almost the same. The of uh, rivets. God, the, this these jeans look brand new. Like I'm surprised they don't have any damage. And he sold it for how much was it? Like eighty thousand dollars. Eighty thousand dollars to someone at uh, at, at Levi's. Levi's. So I know that people on our forum are always kind of talking about that. About like, That's amazing. you know, what old jeans are are worth it. I mean, honestly, if I saw those in a store, you I, wouldn't know they were. I that wouldn't old. know that they were that old. So if you want to see what a pair of Levi's from the late 1800s is, just check out the site and I'll put a link to it. It's so interesting because um, I always think about that with jeans because it, it, it's a weird thing to think about, honestly, with the, the denim jean, you know, like we just think of it like everyone wears jeans. Like if you go to a public place and you look around, like right. most people are wearing jeans. Right. It's like... An amazing material that was like honestly back then it was like revolutionary. Can, can you imagine like bringing someone from the 1800s and they're like, is everyone Everyone's a miner? still wearing? Like, jeans. Like, is everyone <laughs> mining gold? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Why does everyone here work on the railroad? <laughs> We're like, no, jeans are so cool. Yeah. Still, it is. I mean, it sounds so silly, but it really is like a revolutionary yeah. um, thing. Like, if you think about it, you're like. What is a fashion item that's lasted, you know, 150 years? And you're like, I, nothing. Yeah. Um, except like, uh, yeah, nothing and jeans. So that's why, I mean, that's why these jeans. I'm su honestly, $80,000, I'm surturprised they didn't sell for more. Really? Like $80,000, i am like. I'm the exact opposite. I'm like, they don't look no. that big of a deal. Why are those That's worth, a big like, deal. What's someone gonna do? Because with this? not because because okay. First of all, I'm getting very excited. Um, <laughs> the the they look untouched. Right. Because look, something from the 1800s that long ago. I mean, they're all they've all biodegraded. Right. right. I mean, it's just the the a value of it is just that it's just. It it's incredible. It's yeah. incredible. So. It, it's like it's like when people find the original Nikes, like the original, like right. the ones that they like made by hand, like right. with two guys. Or, like that stuff is or, like or, or or like it's when they find like a dinosaur fossil. You know, it's like wow, like that survived, survived on the earth. Yeah, yeah like it's really okay. Good. And then the and last thing uh, before we talk about our numbers is I there's this really good story. Uh, you know, healthcare is important. If you are working for it yourself, healthcare is a big deal, you yes. know. Uh, and we're not going to get into politics here, but you know, there is issues with you know. It's no one really knows what's going to happen to healthcare. You know, right. is it just going to go all free market, private again? Is the government going to make sure there's certain a minimum requirements? Who knows? This is a really good story of I think everyone's fear, and it's this: it's woman. She had a husband who died. Uh, she had her health care, it fell away because her husband had been paying for the health care through his job. Okay. So she didn't have health care for like six months and she got sick. She had to go to the hospital. And then, you know, and this is like everyone's nightmare. And then she just starts getting hit with bills. Crazy bills. And it turned out to be like, I forgot, half a million dollars. Oh my God. And the problem is, is she couldn't read the bill because it's in all these codes, codes. you know? Uh, you know, and these are private healthcare companies, right. you know, so this isn't the government sending her the bill. This is just private companies. And so she's like, like, why is this so much like, you know, I'll pay, like I have a house that I could sell and she uh, says that and pay this, but like, what am I paying for? And no one could explain to her the codes. And it's such an interesting, intricate story where she had to go on Facebook, which it seems like this is very common now, like help me and there's right. these so, groups where yeah, people yeah. are like helping each other and so she would 
she had like a lawyer help her for free and someone that used to work at an insurance company who Amazing. understood the codes and they lived in different parts of the country and they actually flew to her. I mean, it so, shouldn't have to be. So like imagine that. all the time. And so they actually had to take these, the comp the healthcare company of the court to force them to be uh, transparent with what the codes meant. So, right. She knew what she was actually paying for. Right. It turned out she really only owed sixty thousand dollars, and then what happens in a lot of these cases is that, and then they just did kind of a backdoor agreement, and the case is went away, and then she can't talk about actually what happened because oh because they settled the case. yeah because you know it, they're like they yeah. they 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 probably said just pay us. Ten thousand dollars, but it, you know, signed something saying you don't. But you can't say anything bad. Yeah. It's such a great story, but it's such a good example of like why there is a problem, you know. And I'm sure we can disagree on how to solve the problem, but that's what the problem is. The problem. So anyway, uh, hopefully, our new leaders will solve the problem, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, and, and and that's helpful for people as like us that don't work for anybody else and get our health care through our right. employer. We have to go on the private its market, and right now the private market's like, what's going on? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about our numbers. We had a great week. Let um, me see the numbers. And it's just it makes me nervous because it's been so good for us since Christmas time, right. and we're at the end of March. I mean, it just feels so normal. So in our main store, we made about twenty two hundred dollars. Great. I mean, That's amazing, incredible. Great. That's a good number for us. Yes. We, we sold sixty five items. I mean, it's like we're selling almost ten items a day. It's, it's like, just a lot for us. It's great. Trust me, shipping is annoying. Yes. Then in our second store. We made seven hundred dollars oh uh, on fourteen items. You know, I mean, so it's just like it's great. I think for us, we're really a lucky being self-employed. It feels like our eBay store is always up and down at the right times. Like right yeah. now, we need eBay to be making yeah. us its money. Right, and it is, and it's great. You yeah, know? it's uh, very helpful. And we're paying off everything we need to pay off yes. and saving money, so that when it does get slow, we'll be okay. But uh, yeah, it was a good week for us. So, thank God. Oof. And you know what? We're not doing really anything differently than we all ever yeah. are. We're just I mean, a, a listing and just doing it. Yep. So let's talk about just a couple of things. Some of our highest price items. Um, in our main store, we sold a shearling jacket. Um, we get these because they're beautiful. They're like, you know, lamb skin or sheep skin, sheep skin. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, and, I, and it's over $200. I feel like if you see these like billboards on the side of highways, like in the Southwest, it's like, <laughs> it's like stores that just sell these things. Yeah. Like yeah. Shearling jackets. Yeah. And it's like some guy in a cowboy hat yeah. and a shearling jacket. That's well, it's like it's what the it is, Ma you know? Marlboro man. Yeah. Um, he wore that jacket. They, people even call him a Marlboro jacket because of the Marlboro oh, man. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like iconic. But anyway, they're gorgeous and they're super warm. And Although, I feel like it'd be weird wearing one if you're doing anything um, kind of outdoorsy because I feel like it just get. Dirty, really dirty, like really dirty and stained, and like, a, and you know, you can't oh, because the outside it, is like know? a is like a <laughs> like a suede nubuck thing, and you're like, for me, I'm just like, I would get that so dirty. I don't know. I guess it just becomes kind of just just like a dirty old coat. I guess you it, could like, get it cleaned. Yeah. Um, the other highest selling item in our in our second store, it was our highest selling item, was also a jacket. It was this embroidered. Almost Tibetan looking Asian. It's got a mandala design on the back with all these like brightly colored animals like embroidered all over it. I just found it at a thrift store, it was not very expensive. And I put it up for $150 best offer and I got an offer of $140. And it sold in, in a week. Under a week, yeah. That was all your eye. I, I yeah. mean, I might have gotten it because it did look cool, but I wouldn't have thought that it would have been that sought after. Strange. I just thought, look, it's unique. It's colorful. It's well made. My sister was here when we bought it and she tried it on and basically she wanted me to like give it to her and I was like, no, because I'm yeah. selling that for $150. 
And so, yeah, I was like, if if a young person like her thinks it's cool, someone else is going to look at it and think it's cool, too. So We also sold, I mean, again, this is a lot of cold as weather stuff, which we're glad to, to take. We sold a, a wool blanket. Yes. And this was, like, on a table at an auction. A box lot, yeah. It was, like, it's with a bunch of other stuff, and I always love buying blankets. I love blankets. And this specifically was a vintage one from the U.S., uh, it's Naval Academy. Yeah. So if it's like a military thing, that ups its value. Yeah. But it's interesting. You know, we always have people write us. Like, um, guys are like, that's not worth... We, we were, I think we had it for 150 or something. It was like 150 best offer, yeah. And, you know, we always be like, that's not worth... What do you want for it? And we just ignore them. And anyway, we got an offer and sold it for like, you know, 130 bucks. It was 130 know? and it was to someone in San Diego who clearly is a naval person, right. a Navy person. Um, but the funny thing is about this blanket was it had a lot of holes in it. But the thing was, the pattern was so beautiful and it was definitely vintage. And I actually think it was a Pendleton because the Pendleton colors are a gold and like royal blue, but the tag had come off, but I could see the remnants of gold and royal blue. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is a Pendleton. Right. So I was able to put yeah. that in the listing. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure this is a Pendleton. Yeah. So I'm that helps. Sure. I mean, I am an expert. <laughs> no, but And then one other thing, I mean, that I saw that I, I, I get confused by, this is all you. We sell these like we call them French country provincial, like yeah. copper items. And they're like either pans or pitchers or, you know. Yeah. Uh, and they always sell, like like this one sold, it was a pitcher. It sold for $85. And, and it looks yeah. like it was what? silver first but it's got copper under it yeah it's or? like no it's it's yeah it's it's not even like silver it's like tin or something yeah it's like this kind of tin copper uh it looks distressed it's it got a brass any, handle it, there there are never any names on them i just think copper is in right now yeah. i mean i think that's what it comes down to it's right. rustic it's copper it was a big size. it was actually quite a large picture i had a hard time finding a box i was right. like this thing's actually kind of huge um, and and so do, do you think people just buy it and like put flowers in it yeah or, okay yep i don't uh -huh. think he's like serving tea out of it it's like <laughs> mead wine mead mold wine <laughs> spiced mold wine um it's just interesting because we will find these, you know, and they're literally junk. They look like garbage. And um, people sell them or like some people garbage. look, look yeah. like garbage. Some people think but they look like garbage. For some reason, they're like a eye. rustic. It's like rustic country. Yes, the flowers would look beautiful. It might be for a wedding centerpiece, something like that. But yeah, or you paid eighty five dollars for it. Or or if they're like pans. Because sometimes right. we'll find those. They'll too, just hang them up. They they hang them al along a brick wall, exactly. and it looks really good. And then the uh, last thing was, this is not a great sale, but we're so glad to get rid of it. And that are a laser discs. Oh my god! Probably four a years ago, I was at a uh, a was yard it, sale. It was a yard and, sale. It was a, it was an auction because an we. Auction. I remember we bought the laser disc player, right. which was the important. And thing. it came. It's with a box of laser discs. And discs, and I was excited because uh, you know I was like, "Oh, cool! Someone's gonna is want these." Nobody wants laser discs, and we had them for the right price. They do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so we had them up separately. You know, Pulp Fiction and all these Natural Born Killers, and you know all of these films. And we had we started off at like thirty dollars, and we would just slowly bring down the price. We we had them down to like ten dollars each. $5. It was just and, ridiculous. And so finally, as Ryan was smart, we just, we, we did sell some of them. We sold some individually. Slow. Very slowly. And then finally, you just took a picture of all of them and sold them all for like $10. $12. Yeah, for all it was of six of them for $12. Right. And it literally sold in like 20 minutes. Right. So I'm like, that was the right price. Right. But that's, that's, you know, that's it's one of those things. So we'll never buy those again. Like, uh, it was just one of those things where you have that, to find the right, like, weird That's collector. just like an orphan technology that... Dead, dead media. Yeah, that no one is a uh, nostalgic for I, I couldn't discs. wait to get those out of our storage. I was yeah. like, yes. Okay, let's talk about customer issues. Yes. So um, we had a, uh, a global shipping customer. This is the second in two weeks complain of an item getting like pretty jostled around and damaged. 
and 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 we think that they're telling the, I, the, I the truth. Yeah. They I mean, sent they're, photos. They're, they're like, uh, this thing got all bent up and messed up, and it's you know not great. So the good thing is, eBay takes full responsibility of that stuff. So I had to tell my customers, please contact eBay directly. Um, but both of them opened a damage case. So the great thing is, I just called eBay and I'm like, this is a global shipping item. They said it got damaged in global shipping. Can you please close the case? And they closed the case. They're like, yep. And then no and then we don't hear anything else again. And we just assume with that they give the person their yeah, money. Yeah, so what happens is they close the case on my end and they um, refund the customer and we get to keep our money. So that's what happened with both cases. And that's why we love I global, love global shipping. shipping. I love global shipping. So my question is, because she was taking photos – uh, of the item and it looked like and we've never experienced this that y- the item got taken out of the box that we sent could it, could that be what true what was the second item oh it was a book yeah. no uh i don't think they repacked it but the weird thing is i sent this book in a box and i'm like how did this get damaged right. how does a book in a box get damaged and my my feeling about that one is um it was a heavy book and it just got jostled around mm. i mean i mean i packed it and it, it was like you know it wasn't moving right. around and i don't know it's really yeah. i but, don't think they repacked it i don't think they repack anything but it's nice uh you know ebay just takes care of it and it's a good thing yeah um the other thing is, uh, we had a buyer. We sold a water a filter, a pure water. filter. You know, filter. it's one of those things where I don't know. I saw it at like a thrift store or like a Whatever, yard sale, yeah. and it's like new in box, twenty five cents or something. You know, and I don't know anything about these things. I don't know how to test it. And we sold it. It finally sold. It probably took a couple of years. And the guy uh, writes us and says, "I'm it's returning leaking. this. It's leaking. It doesn't work." And so we immediately just refund his cash. You know, okay. I didn't so make shipping. right. I, I refunded all of it, but the thing was, honestly, I because I never used a pure water filter. It connects to your faucet. I Googled it a little bit, and, like, a bunch of people online are like, these don't work. They don't work well. They probably work well for a lot of people, but a lot of people are like, look, it's just leaking out the sides. Right. And that's what he said it was. Right. And I was like, okay, so it's so it's a defect. Problem know? solved. You know, I mean, sometimes that just happens. Uh, yeah. You know, we'll is never buy those again, but that's... I guess one of the dangers of just finding those things, and you can't uh, test it because it's new in box, so right. you're kind of you like know, it's you know it's still in the package. But we'll never buy one again. So lately, we've had a handful of returns for clothing uh, where people say it doesn't fit or it's not the right color for them, which stinks. But the great thing is, those are the kind of returns where people are willing to they will pay all the shipping and they will pay a restocking fee. Yep. So and it's all through hassle free. It's returned, so the uh, returns automatically accepted. They send it back. Everything. Gets I mean, I don't want a return, but right. if someone's like, "Yeah, it just didn't fit yeah. me," I'm like, "Fine." But like other people say, it does seem to come in waves mm. where we won't have a, a a return for like two months, and then suddenly we'll have like six in a week. So <laughs> yeah, it just happens. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is this is not a sale, but this is I think an experience that happens to anyone that sells on eBay. If you've sold on eBay for any uh, a length of time, yes, we had a guy. He wanted to buy a T-shirt that we had up for sixteen dollars. <laughs> sixteen. And he sends a message, and he just says, "This is there any meat on the bone?" That's it. He it, said it in a way that that made it wasn't exactly like that, but on the price or something. No. Meaning, is there wiggle room? Right. In the no. Price? No. I mean, right. he said, "Is there any meat on the bone?" Uh, meaning, like, can you give me a discount? Like, he was just. Right. I don't know. Anyway, and Ryan says, <laughs> not for a $16 item. And then I took over <laughs> from there because he's like, come on, there's got to be some it wiggle a room here. Right. And I just said, if you can find, because it was a cool vintage shirt from the 80s from like a local PBS, PBS station. station. And you know, they're like PBS nerds. I mean, yeah, it was a cool this shirt. Is a shirt that they don't make any, you know, it's like, it's. It's a weird, rare item for the right person. I can't believe it was only priced sixteen dollars. To be honest with you, but yeah. I mean, I told him like I tell a lot of these people. I say, if you can find a vintage shirt in this quality for cheaper someplace else, you should buy that shirt. Right? You know, like it's Do a it. free market. Yeah. And then 
he got really angry. <laughs> and he said something about, like, he was going to report us to eBay. Uh, well, it's because, so funny because you can't report right. someone to eBay if you haven't bought something. And, and, in, and in the meantime, is Ryan was smart and just already blocked him. Like, yeah, like, we, like we were not going to sell this shirt to this guy, but I felt like, uh, I don't know, I was in that mood where I wanted to kind of educate him <laughs> a little bit. And then... Uh, after he, uh, you know, said he was going to tell on us. Basically, he was he was mean and insulting right. and mad and was like, and just, "I'm reporting you." And then just strange. And then and then I just ignored him. And then he comes back and says, "All right, why don't we start over again? Can you sell this for? I think it was like twelve dollars <laughs> and ship it for free." And all I said was, "Nope." And that's the last I ever said. <laughs> Since then, over the period of three days. He uh, writes us a couple times a day and is like, come on. Obsessive. You've got to be able to give me a deal on this. And then his uh, last one was, I'll give you 24 hours and that's it. The 12 hours. Oh, yeah. 12 you have hours. 12 hours to it's respond to me. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's one of, it's one of those things where um, you just think, okay, well, it's just nothing more than hilarious because... Yeah, I, I think, too, that... You know, maybe guys like that, you know, there's all kinds of people that sell on eBay and maybe there are a newer people on eBay yeah. who fall into that kind of trap where they either like start fighting right. or, you know, he's kind of like a bully. So maybe they like, oh, oh okay, okay, I'll sell it to you. I'll sell it to you for this much money. But the money. beautiful thing is you can block those yeah. people. He can buy nothing in our store. Right. That's what's, that's what's like so funny it's, to me. Like the second he started getting like obsessively insane i'm like block yeah it's it's very satisfying and you know we talked about this the other week i mean i think that's the difference between enjoying having an ebay store and people that just like are always feeling ebay is trying to, to it's crush them is that if you don't control your store yeah. and control the comfort stations and control the, the uh, a flow of how a customer right. deals it's with you then you're going to feel like it's really chaotic and everything's against you, you know? Right. But if you control it, then it's really... It, it, it was a funny experience. It was funny. Like, it was funny. You and I were texting each other. Just and laughing. Kind of laughing just about like, it. like, what is going on? Because he felt like he could bully us, you know? Yeah, over a stinking yeah. t-shirt. It's so funny. So, so on the exact same day this was happening, this other woman is messaging me. I'm just laughing all day. I'm like, what is with these people today? She, over the course of several days, she had very specific questions about a belt buckle. And, like, most of the questions I just ignored. Because I'm like, this is way too detailed. Well, they're, they're, they're questions that, that the uh, photos should be able to right. tell you. Like, are there scratches? What color gold is it? You yeah. Know, how does it work? And, you know, basically... You're just like, it's there. It's in the photos. Yeah. But she's, like, trying to get a deeper understanding and she needs us to start to make its value comments right which like, i don't like to do you know how deep are the scratches i'm like it's metal right. like it just right. th this is absurd it's a kind of it's questions where people are like is this going to look good on me? right and you should never answer those <laughs> questions because you're never going to make that person happy right you know? so after a few days of very detailed questions that i couldn't answer um she was like would you do a deal on this belt buckle? And I'm like, lady. Uh, and I basically was like, I'm open to reasonable offers, thinking she's going to get an offer, we're going to get this sale done, whatever. And she wants, like, all this money off. And I was like, no, sorry, that's not reasonable. And then, and then I said, because sometimes you just have to be like, if you have this many doubts about this item, because because I'm talking a paragraph of questions, you should probably not buy this online. Yeah, just just buy it in person. Just, so you, uh, you need can, to be able yeah. to see this in person to have a. And then I stopped answering her questions, and again with the obsessiveness, every twenty minutes, question, right. question. Why won't you respond to me? Why would I want to buy this? I want. I'm just like no. Yeah. I actually did not block her because I was like, if she wants to pay full price really? and buy this, interesting. she'll probably return it. Yep. I should probably block her. But it was funny in the same day, these two like, you know, right. obsessive customers that we were like, just ignore. But our point is, if you're new to selling on eBay, these kind of customers will pop up. And the whole thing is, is not to like yeah. write long diatribes 
or start fighting them or arguing or you know whatever uh i mean i honestly we normally don't even do as much as we did we normally just totally ignore people yeah when when they start to act like that i just happened to feel like i needed to like hopefully that guy learned a lesson so he won't treat other ebay uh, sellers like he he hope hope hopefully he'll realize he doesn't have that much power you know yeah all right so things we learned in the forum this week someone just kind of popped up i think that they were it's new to the it's forum. I don't think that they were a new to our podcast, but mm-hmm. they had a really interesting answer to what happens when a buyer says, I'm buying this item from you, but will you uh, ship it in like three weeks? Right. Because I'm not going to be home. And, you know, the problem with that is then uh, you get dinged on the uh, shipping and eBay thinks that it, it, you've shipped it late. Even right. if you call eBay and say, look, she's asking me to uh, do it, so don't ding me. And they're like, right. no, too bad. Yeah. So what she said was... You can set she or he, you can send it with a signature confirmation. Um, it costs $2.35, so you got to be willing to pay that money or ask your buyer to pay that money. Right. But the great thing is with signature confirmation... It has to get signed. So if that person's away on vacation for two weeks, the post office is just going to hold it for them right. until they get it and sign it. So you've shipped it. It shows you shipped it. And then, eBay's like, great. And then the buyer can time. just pick it up. It's whenever, whenever they, they want. Like it, yeah. So that's kind of a great way yeah. to get around that. Where if someone's asking you maybe before they buy, right. can you ship this in a month? You're like, I would say yeah. Say say yes, but. It, you know, I'll, I'll ship it. It'll, it'll get held there, and it'll cost you an extra two dollars or whatever. Yeah. And the buyer should be look like cool with that because it solves it, the it solves the problem because yep. it's not going to get delivered to their house, you know, beforehand. So that that was a great solution. And then the other thing was, and this was Paul, as we like to call him, Hollywood Paul. <laughs> um, so he was noticing that he had a lot of packages that eBay was uh, marking as he had uh, shipped them late. Yeah. And he said that we've been telling people something wrong for a long time. And that is, if someone buys something today, it has to get... We always said it just ha- that we have to print a label by a midnight the, the next, next business day. day. What he said was, eBay told him, that not only does a label have to get printed, it has to get scanned sometime by a midnight the, the, the next day. And that's a different... But... You do okay. So say I don't do that, and I'm like, okay, it sold on Monday. I'm printing a label by midnight PST on Tuesday, um, and it's not scanned. You will not get the ding if it gets um, uh, scanned by the post office within your uh, shipping time. time, shipping time, or if it gets delivered on time. In quotes. Okay. So that gets overridden if it's like. If it Fine. Gets if it gets to the person time. by when eBay estimated it will. Interesting. So that's why I've never seen those dings before. Because right. I'm like, I've never seen any dings for yeah. that. Because, because, it, because it sounds like we have a good post office. I know stuff gets scanned. Everyone's experience it's with the post office is different, but for us, we seem to have a good post office where where they're scanned. Some people on time. some people complain that. Uh, my item didn't get scanned until it got delivered, which is crazy. You're like, wow, it didn't get scanned once. And that's some people's experience. And I've seen that when we were in New York City and I was shipping some things from New York City, it wouldn't get scanned. Like none of the scans would show up for like three days. I'm like, right. what is going on? Right. You know, it's just, that's just how they do it, I guess. So then people that have that problem, then, I mean, I guess they have to actually go to the post office and be like, I need to watch Please scan manually this. scan this, wow. which sucks because yeah. I don't have time to do that. Right. I, mean, I mean, who has that, time to do that? That might kill two hours out of, out of a day. I mean, know? it especially if you're like, I have 25 packages. Like, right. that, that's crazy. And then so. the person, and then s- someone else jumped in and agreed that, that that was true. And they said what they do now is that they make sure that they print out that scan. It's a scan sheet. Scan sheet. So it gives the mail person a it's sheet easy. of all the uh, barcodes of every single thing. It's not so, even that. I'll no. explain it. It's even simpler than that. It's a bulk thing where there's one barcode oh, really? and everything, you know, your 25 packages 
just knows is within that. that. It's like all these packages are within all the right. scan code, so they scan once. So why don't we do that? Because I I package stuff at all different times uh, during the day. Like yeah. like today, I packaged like four things that were stored in my office, right. and then you're gonna go get some other stuff. And so it's right. like I can, I would have like five scan sheets, and right. it would be like so it's so it's like yeah, you're like just point? scan the packages, yeah. and they do anyway. Huh. So. For me, but but for other people, they might only package at certain right. times of the day. I'm going to start packing at 10, and then and then I'll be done. And, and then, then nothing. So and the other thing, too, is I'll pack the night before, and stuff sells overnight. Yeah. So then I get stuff in the morning. How annoying. It is annoying, and it's cool. good because we made money. But okay. So I will link to those conversations that, as we had, so uh, you can jump in there, and if you have anything to add, it, you can uh, you know add it. Okay, so let's uh, answer questions or comments that people have called in about. You can always call our voicemail line at any time of the day or night. Uh, the phone number is 540-407-8486. Hello, Jay and Ryan. This is Craig calling. I have some high-end, um, you know, paintings. Actually, no, excuse me, they're lithographs, etchings. And Prince Jean Klaus is a high-end artist from uh, the 50s, uh, Pueblo, Native American type of uh, art. The artwork has what you call foxing, uh, you know, some blemishes around the edges of the paintings that are, or the, the, the prints that are in the frames. And I don't know if I should sell them as they are or find a conservator to, uh, you know, spend a little extra money and get them up to snuff to, to resell. Problem is, I have no idea how to get a hold of anybody to reconstitute these prints and get them perfect, so to speak. Have you got any information on how to restore vintage prints and or uh, lithographs for resell? on eBay. Some of them that I've got right now I see are selling well into the thousands. I just don't know which way to go. So any help on artwork restoration uh, and how much you should actually put out or sell it as is would be a great help. Love your your show. It's it's really helping me a lot. Look forward to hearing any advice you've got. Thank you. So this might be a little bit out of our area of expertise, but this is what we do. We sell them as is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if the cost of getting it restored, if you would make that money back than if you sold it at a higher price. Right. I mean, you know, it would have to be pretty high end art where if you're talking about, you know, thousands, thousands of dollars, yeah. you know, so if I put in, you know, $800 of work, then it's going to sell for you $10, know twelve thousand yeah 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 twelve thousand no twelve hey for twenty thousand but uh, yeah so and we've actually never restored any artwork yeah. um I don't know I've not had experience finding those people right I mean we would just you know we just sell it online and let the person that buy it you know they can let choose to do, do what they want you should still put a strong price on it because the artwork should be valuable. we also have never sold any artwork that's worth you know thousands of dollars no. I mean I think the most would maybe eight hundred dollars I mean, or something max, I, I mean think yeah so yeah. again if this you know and and I think if I had something worth that much you know that's when it's thinking about maybe you go to an auction I don't know I mean yeah, yeah. it's you know I I just don't know when 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 people say high end I'm always like how high end how is high? this <laughs> but if it's a lithograph I don't know I mean I say just a list it get yeah, what you can for it, it you know uh and go for it Hi, Jean and Ryan. This is Carolyn again, the lady who called in earlier. Here is what happened. I took my packaged item into FedEx office. From there, I take my iPad along with me. They weighed it and they measured it. And as, as they gave me the measurements, I implanted them in the eBay, um, you know, thing where you can purchase the label. From there, I send the label to their email at FedEx, and they print it out while I'm standing in the office. So all the measurements and everything that were in 
my label was given me directly in the FedEx office. And from there, they printed it out and put it on my package and, of course, shipped it out. And I wanted to make that clear and to see um, what you all think if there are any suggestions that you all have, you know, a way I can handle um, possibly, hopefully, getting some of my monies back because this cost me twice what the item was sold for. Thank you again so much for everything you guys do. Um, I learned so much from you, and you also inspire me to do more. All right. Um, you all have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye. So it sounds like uh, you did everything, everything right. correctly. I mean, I can't imagine someone being more on top of it yeah. than bringing your iPad. You're so smart. And, and typing in the information as it's happening. Um, look, we've heard other people complain about uh, it's FedEx. And here's the deal. When FedEx works, it works. Yeah, it's And, great. you know, it's kind of just like this great uh, uh, thing. But we've had like one issue where something broke. Like we shipped a toilet bowl and it broke. And it was, it was a such thing. a pain in the butt trying to get FedEx to do anything about it. And and FedEx even said that they damaged it and they still wouldn't refund right. it. Right. And, and like, so – so I find like when there's a problem, FedEx is not no. easy to deal with. And maybe that's just like their thing. They're like, you know, their margins are so paper thin. They just can't. They just can't. You know, I don't exactly. know. Yeah. But so so here's the thing. Um, why don't you go down to that FedEx store and be like, bring all the proof you have. Look, you guys helped me. We did this. You measured yeah. it. These were the measurements. This was the weight. You have all that information. Even- and... Print out your eBay invoice and be like, FedEx charged me double. Get somebody to explain that to you. Because that, it sounds like eBay can't explain it, which is odd. And FedEx doesn't want to explain it either. So the people who helped you out, you got to be like, where's the discrepancy here? That's yeah. a massive amount of money extra. And, and I don't know, like, if this is a store you go to often, but, I mean, even try and find the person that helped you. I mean, and it's be like, totally is, Remember me? Like, how does this happen? Yeah, because the good thing yeah. is you have the measurements, you have the weight, you know exactly how much it was. Why did it get charged extra? Right. What's the, what's what's yeah. the reason? And please call back because, or, or email us because I would love to kind of know the – the final yeah, answer. That's weird. You know? That's crazy to me. You did everything right, and that's what's confusing. Hi, right, Joe in New York here. I want to thank you both, first of all, t- uh, for the wonderful service you provide in the community you've brought together. I enjoy your podcast every week, and I've been a longtime listener. I want to share an experience I, I just went through with eBay regarding negative feedback. I sold a flash to a buyer, a camera flash. Uh, it was my personal flash and uh, barely used, tested it before it was listed, worked fine. Sold it to someone. I offer 30-day returns, no questions asked for a refund. It was outside the 30-day return period. I get a a message uh, through eBay from the buyer. He wanted $15, said the flash isn't working, and wanted $15 so he can go get it repaired. Now, of course, no one's going to fix a flash, a camera flash, for $15, and likely it wouldn't be repaired anyway. There's probably not a shop out there that would repair something like this uh, any longer. So what I offered him was a full refund. I said, just ship it back to me. I'll give you a full refund. And uh, he said, give him 15 bucks or he'll leave me negative feedback. I recognized it for what it was. Told him, send it back to me. I'll give you a full refund and a very nice message back to him. Never heard from him, but within a very short period of time, I had negative feedback. Contacted eBay, explained that I thought it was feedback extortion. And uh, he wanted the $15 and or he'd leave me negative feedback. I told him to look at the messages. They did. They saw no problem with what he did, and the feedback stands. And so then I asked uh, politely to speak to the next person in uh, line there, and, and the next person said the same thing. And, in fact, they recommended that I message him and tell him that if he removes the negative feedback, I'll give him the $15, which, of course, I wasn't doing. So the best I could do was reply to the uh, feedback he left me and then just let it stand, although I do plan to call him back because I contacted some others. I recognized that he was doing this to other people by the feedback he's left for others, and I contacted some of the others, and one did get back to me. Same thing, a flash, a camera flash. This person said he knew it was working, and the buyer asked for the same amount of money or negative feedback, and so he ended up with the negative feedback also. The buyer wanted $15. The seller knew told me he knew it was working and recognized it also as feedback extortion. 
And so I just wanted to share that. I'm going to call eBay back now that I've spoken to another seller who's telling me the same thing. I'm going to give it one more try, and then I'm not going to spend any more time on it. But if I get a different result, I'll call back and update you. Thanks again for all that you do. Take care. So number one, you you again handle that perfectly. I mean, you did everything correctly. My questions are, number one is, if he's contacting you about this after the return window, I don't even see how I, – I mean, you know – Huh, that's that's a good point. Why he's even – but I guess right. he can still leave the negative feedback. Okay. Right. It is clearly if – if what you say is true, it, it's clearly feedback extortion. It, clearly. I mean if you said give me a $15 or – Or I'll give you negative yeah. feedback. Now <laughs> – It's like – Now real quick. Instead of, in, instead of when you're on the phone with someone – with a customer service rep that doesn't help you, the thing to, to do is hang up. And try again. Else. If you say pass it off, that gives a person a chance to, to be like, hey, Amy, tell this person the same thing yeah, I did. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. But sometimes it happens to us where we have to actually like try, you know, several Somewhere times else. because, you know, we have to call eBay every so often for other things. So when we get a good rep, that's when we say. Right. So 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 what you're saying is when I'm calling for another issue, if I'm like, I want to get a return closed. And they're like, is there anything else I can help you with? I uh, guess there is. Uh, please get rid of this negative feedback. You know, like you, you have yeah. someone who's understanding and who has helped you and you're hoping they can. But I, I do think that you should call back. Um, and number one, just be like, this is feedback extortion. Plain yeah. and simple. Read the messages. I messaged another seller and he had the same issue with this other with this person. Uh, it's it's. It's an obvious trend with this person. You can see how many negative feedbacks they've left. That's very good evidence. I mean, yeah. what more can you do? You're yeah. like, this is clear. So I think you know what's right. Now, I, now we will admit that it does seem that the customer support we get for our Anchor Store is better than the customer service we get for our Premium Store. Because yep. we have two kinds of stores, yep. and we notice the it's difference like oh. the the customer service reps for the anchor stores are more empowered and yep. seems to understand the uh it rules more and the people for the premium stores seem maybe they're just reading off a script and you know are just trying to get you off the phone so that's very unfortunate i mean that really is not a good uh corporate policy that ebay has that you know if you pay more if you get better better service, service. I, yeah. I agree with that 100 percent. yep Okay, that's it for the podcast this week. You can check out the blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discuss and to join the conversation on the forums. You can call and leave a question or a comment. The phone number is 540-407-8486. We post an episode every Monday morning. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or through YouTube so you'll always get the latest episode. And we are ending this podcast in 3, 2, 1...